Hey everyone, so we're looking at question three now, which shows two trig graphs, right? Specifically, F, which is three sine px, and G, which is two sine x. So it basically shows us two sine graphs on this um, on this page um, between the angles of zero and 360. So what we know, right, is, and what we can see is that F repeats itself twice in this 360, whereas G of x only has one wave, okay? Remember that a sine graph if it hasn't, if it doesn't have a coefficient over there, right? If it, the coefficient is just one, like we see over here in front of this x, it repeats itself only once every 360. Okay. So it says here, write down the value of p. P effectively says, how often does the graph repeat itself in 360? The 360 specifically for sine. Well, we see that it repeats itself twice. Therefore, p equals two. Okay. It's not too difficult. Then it says, okay, well, given that, what is the period, right? What is the period of f of x? So it's saying, well, then in how many degrees does it repeat itself once? Well, it repeats itself once in 180, okay? So it's important to understand these things because it's sort of quite basic understanding of these sine graphs, but it also is important because it displays key understanding, right? And it shows the marker that you know what's a period. You know um, what the um, normal period of a sine graph is and how it's been changed for the specific manipulation of a sine graph. Okay, let's now move on to C. So now C says write down the coordinates of B correct to one decimal digit. Now, Right, we know that B is sitting over here and it's a point of intersection. There's numerous points of intersection of these two graphs. We have one there, 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 and there, but it wants B, okay? And it's important to note that B would be between 270 and 360, okay? So I've said no problem. I'm going to make the two graphs equal each other. Then I'm going to have to solve somehow to get a value of X. So what I did is I said, okay, let me go to my formula sheet. And let me maybe use this formula here, right? Because I have this sine 2x and I'd like to manipulate it so that I can kind of get a value for x so that I can get an answer. So it's not always easy knowing which identity to use. The best way to practice, um, to get good at this is just to practice, right? And sometimes then you'll just start seeing it, okay? So what, we, what I did here, I put that in, got 6 sine x cos x equals 2 sine x. So I didn't do anything to that side. I brought it this side and I said, okay, no problem. Let me do a little bit of factorization because 2 sine x is in both those terms. And that's what's left. Divided through by 2 sine x because that's doable. And then I got cos x equals 1 over 3. Okay. Now, when we get this, what we know is we know cos is positive. Okay. That's important. But when we get questions like this, we always get our reference angle, which is a positive acute angle, which then we put into the cos system to get our answer. Okay, so I put cos, right, put cos of 1 over 3, and I got 70.5. That is my reference angle. Then I said, well, where's cos positive? Use the little cos diagram, and you see that cos, that cos is positive in the first, right, and the fourth quadrant. But now what we need to do is we need to go back to our drawing, right, to our graph and say, okay, but where is B? B is between 270 and 360. So it actually is sitting in the fourth quadrant. A is sitting in the first quadrant, but we're not interested in A. We're interested in B, right? So we're in the fourth quadrant. And that's why I said, 360 minus my reference angle gives me my x value at b. Okay, so now we have the x value at b. We can then just sub this x value at b into, let's put, just put it into 2 sine, right? Um, and let's get our y value. Okay, so I'm going to say 2 sine 289.5. And I get negative one point. Eight, nine. Okay, so my coordinates at B are 289.5. Okay, 
and I'm going to say negative 1.9. Now, the reason I said 1.9 is because they specifically asked me in the question to, to um, give the coordinates of B correct to one decimal digit. Answer the question that has been asked, right? Don't lose marks for silly things like that. So that is your final answer there. Okay. Let's now move on to the last question of this question. It says, if k is a positive real number, then for what values of k will f of x equal k have no real solutions? So let's just write f of x out so that we can kind of just familiarize ourselves with it again. All right, so it's the 3 sine 2x. Now, okay, it's saying if this equals k, okay, what, what would k have to be? right, and is a positive real number, okay, it's important, for there to be no real solutions. Now, what this is testing you is it's basically saying, right, what are the bounds of this 3 sine 2x when it comes to y? So let's go look at that, okay. So the bounds that we have here are negative 3 and 3. Okay, it doesn't go to 4 and it doesn't go to negative 4. It's between negative 3 and 3. So, right, if I then had, um, if I had 4, right, and I put that in there, right, let's see if we can get an answer. Okay, because then it would be 4 over 3 equals sine 2x. Now, if I do this, I get an error. Right? Because it's outside of that range that we're allowed. Okay, So k can definitely not be smaller than negative 3 or greater than 3. right? Because it can't be outside those bounds. But what they've said here, and I'm just doing this as an example there. They've said k is a positive real number. right? So we're only going to be looking at the bound up here for the positives. So we say... If k is bigger than 3, right? Because remember, at, at 3, it's fine, right? It's not a problem at 3. It's only if it's ba greater than 3 that there's no real solution. Okay, so they, they're wanting you to display that you actually understand what the graph is saying, right? Really good question, this. I hope that was helpful. It was only 8 marks, but there was a lot in there. Okay, I hope that was helpful. Let's move on to question 4.